So I just basically introduced the event. We want to uh, basically bring people who have done 2D movies uh, to, to take the jump into the 3D world. So this is a, you know, some kind of a tutorial. You will get uh, you know, advice from experienced stereographers and cinematographers. And I would like also to tell you that this workshop is organized in cooperation with the uh, UP3D, which is the uh, Union of Professional Stereographers in France, and the International 3D and Advanced Imaging Society, and we'll hear more about that. So, Sylvain, do you want to add something? Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here today. Um, as the chairman of UP3D, I'm very glad to uh, be here uh, with uh, 3D Stereo Media and the 3D Society as organizer of this workshop. Um, I hope at the end of the workshop you will be more aware of what can be do in 3D and uh, willing with uh, more projects to share with us. Um, we do it fast because we've got a lot of panels coming. Um, so enjoy and feel free after the session to uh, come to us for more information. Thank you, Sylvain. And now it's a pleasure for me to introduce Jim Chebin. Thank you, Jacques. So two weeks ago uh, today, I was in Beijing, where the state agency of radio, film, and television invited us to do a presentation on what the rest of the world was thinking of the future of media, television, and, and movies. So it's great to be here today uh, to talk to you about what people in China and Hollywood are, are thinking. So uh, the Society is a, a global organization with uh, chapters in China and Japan and the UK and Canada and here in the EU. When we talk about advanced imaging, here are the uh, general areas that we talk about on the theatrical side, laser projection, 3D sound, high dynamic range, richer colors, large screen formats like IMAX, high frame rate. Those are all the new trends on the theatrical side that the society and our studio members are looking at. In television, when we think of advanced imaging, we would say 4K, ultra high def, Streaming is a, 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 a powerful new trend. More content is now viewed in China uh, via streaming than on broadcast television. So streaming uh, your new movies uh, in the future is definitely a trend. Uh, high dynamic range, uh, the new uh, color gamuts that will be enabled on the new 4K TV sets over the next few years. Larger screens, uh, auto stereo and mobile tablets. Uh, uh, Apple has announced their new iOS software will be 4K compatible. So retinal quality screens for tablets and phones, streaming, uh, high richer color range, and auto stereo and 3D imaging. So all of the people who make uh, platforms are moving in the same direction, which means that your content will be projected uh, or distributed in, in much higher quality on a variety of different uh, high quality formats uh, and premium formats going forward. So let's talk quickly about the 3D business. These are the all time Hollywood worldwide box office hits of the top 16. You'll notice 12 of those are 3D movies. Here's the 2013 box office. Here are the 19 top movies and you will see that 16 of those top 19 movies are 3D movie. Look at Frozen. Frozen is now the second biggest movie of last year, let's go back. Frozen is now the sixth biggest movie, worldwide movie of all time, uh, a 3D movie. Godzilla opened in seven major countries this last weekend. It was number one at the box office worldwide. Warner Brothers announced yesterday that 51% of all tickets sold for Godzilla were 3D tickets, 51%. It's the biggest uh, opening day of the year in the United States. Biggest opening weekend, number one in eight uh, countries. And it was promoted, but the critics and everyone else said this is a movie made to be seen in 3D and at IMAX. And there have been multiple 3D screenings available at movie theaters. So a uh, very big success this past weekend. Disney passed $1 billion uh, in movie ticket sales last week worldwide based on three movies. Frozen, Captain America, and Thor, all 3D movies. So what we're seeing is, and what the studios are saying is 3D, that upcharge in 3D ticket prices adds significantly to the business model of a movie 
uh, which is why they are uh, committed to their big blockbusters in 3D. So far this year, Captain America's done almost 700 million, Spider-Man's at 600 million, the Lego 460, Rio 2, 424. If you look at these m movies, all the big movies and the big box office winners have a 3D component. X-Men opens this weekend. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon is in two weeks. They premiered it here the other night here at Cannes. Transformers opens in two weeks. Tom Cruise next movie, Edge of Tomorrow, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So it's going to be a very big summer for 3D movies. For any movie that's going to gross $150 million, the studios have pretty much figured out it will be profitable if they make it in 3D. It costs about $10 million to make a major motion picture in 3D, eight to $10 million. And the return on that investment uh, is quite good if you're selling half your tickets. If you'd like to email me afterwards, I'd be glad to send you a copy of this PowerPoint. But this is a, this is a incremental revenue model that is used by the studios in Hollywood that says, okay, here are, the, here are the various costs of my movie. If I add in 3D, here is the additional revenue I will get off that movie and the additional profit. And I'd be glad to give you a copy of this. It's a society chart that was given to us by some studio folks, but it's now a business that the studios look at and they can see exactly if we invest in 3D, how much more money will we make? And I'll give you a, a quick rundown, but basically five of the top 10 movies of 2013 in China were 3D, three to the top five uh, were Chinese titles. So they're not only importing major movies from overseas, they're making 3D movies in China that are doing quite well at the box office. 16,000 digital screens, 12,000 are 3D, 150 IMAX screens, and they have 450 IMAX screens on order to be built in China. In the United States, there are 100, tele 100 million television households. They told me last week in China, in China there are 400 million television households, 250 million cable subscribers. So the numbers in China are so big that if you make content, you need to be thinking in terms of China because they are very hungry for content and it's the market of the future. There are 70 major movies in 2014 and 15 that will be in 3D. 2015, the studios believe, will be a record-breaking year for 3D movies. So all this year, people have been saying, just wait for 2015. Jurassic World, uh, Star Wars, with the, they're bringing back the original cast and adding new characters. Avengers 2, Batman vs. Superman are just a few of next year's movies. But next year will be a record-breaking year for 3D movies. What we're seeing is, on the whole, fewer movies being made in 3D. Uh, but overall, 3D success-wise, uh, in many respects, is, is very, very strong. Let's talk about artistic agreement. These are awards that uh, were handed out at our Society Awards in Hollywood at Warner Brothers in February. Gravity, Frozen, uh, Metallica were some of our winners. Um, here are some of the Mr. Hugh Blow, which went on to win an Oscar, uh, CCTV China. But really, 3D documentaries and films from all over the world, that's Mr. Katzenberg receiving his Lifetime Achievement Award. But here are the Academy Awards, because two years ago or three years ago when we were here, people were saying, well, I think 3D makes money for the studios, but is it really an artistic medium? I don't know if it's an artistic uh, recognized uh, art form. 2010, Avatar and Up won a combined total of five uh, Oscars. Uh, in 2011, there were four Oscars that went to 3D movies. In 2012, uh, Hugo uh, swept visual effects, cinematography, art direction, sound and editing. 2013, Life of Pi and Brave. 2014, look at the number of 3D movies that won uh, 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 awards. What I think is curious is that if we look at the last four years, two awards have gone for best director uh, for 3D, uh, Gravity and uh, Ang Lee for Life of Pi. Visual effects, four of the last five Oscars for visual effects have gone to 3D movies. Four of the last five Oscars for cinematographer has, have gone to 3D movies. Animated, obviously, all of them are now. All of DreamWorks, all of Pixar, all major animated movies now from the studios are 3D. S sound, art direction, and costume production. And that gives you an idea of the number of Oscars that are being handed out. So 
in in Hollywood, the the I heard the other day that Sony is working on a project right now that they think is an Oscar contender, and it's going to be in 3D. Ang Lee's next movie on Muhammad Ali will be in 3D. Wim Wenders is completing his second movie in Canada right now, 3D. Um, Ridley Scott is finishing up Exodus, which will be out for Christmas in 3D, his second 3D movie. So you've got a top tier group of directors that are now working on their second major 3D product, and we're quite excited. People have said that Gravity had a great impact because it showed the directors of the production community how to use 3D as a creative tool. And I think that uh, uh, this year is going to demonstrate again that 3D is um, uh, not only a financially viable way to make movies, and the studios are now have accepted that, but it is also an artistic way to do it. Real briefly, the future of television, uh, 4K ultra high def is going to be a standard feature on 80% of all the TV sets that are on the market next year. So you'll get a 4K set whether you pay for it or not. And uh, standard high def TV sets will be taken off the production line. So just be thinking in as far as filmmaking is concerned, the TV sets of the future are, are going to be 4K and pretty much 80% of everything being manufactured beginning next year will be 4K. It's a brilliant picture, and when they add high dynamic range, it means the colors that you're gonna be able to use when you make your movie are gonna be able to be seen at home in a, in a picture that is equal to or better than a theatrical experience. And I'm guessing that's my 10 minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> One more? No, I'm done, thank you. Thank you, Jim, thanks a lot. Okay, hello again. Um, so I'm here to give you uh, an overview now uh, on the other side of the Atlantic, on the old continent of what is uh, 3D in Europe. Uh, a, a few words about our association. It's been founded in 2005 by professional of stereoscopic 3D, at that time working for museums and commercials and events as the cinema, the 3D cinema wave um, had not been yet uh, here in France. Um, our association is, uh, has been founded in France, but uh, gather uh, people from different countries in Europe. Here's a quick overview of the companies, uh, the members of the, um, the associations. Uh, it gathers production company, uh, post-production studios, um, services providers uh, for the company side, and we al al also have independent professionals, stereographers, um, uh, cinematographers, and so on. Um, we are uh, a French association working with European uh, companies based in Belgium, France, Italy, Spain, Germany. That's an old slide. Well, we'll see it. Um, um, okay. So here are the um, festival uh, we are partners to, including 3D Store Media, uh, who's organizing the workshop today. Um, of course, uh, production is in Europe. I've got a uh, smaller budget than US uh, movies, uh, mainly based on international car production um, created by independent producers. And we will see it later, especially at the end of the session. Um, the production can uh, be built using different ways to found uh, the film, institutional or private found. Uh, the 3D, 3D screens in Europe, um, in the cinema. Uh, in early 2013, we, w we had uh, nearly um, 21,000 screens in Europe, which is um, nearly half of the screens in Europe. In 2014, we expand more than 25,000 screens. Uh, some European 3D films uh, you might have seen at the cinema. Uh, Minuscule, one of the latest one, um, is an animated movie. Um, T.S. Pivet from Jean-Pierre Jeunet, of course. Uh, Despicable which is not a European film but made in France. Uh, Pina from Film Vendors, which is one of the more uh, most famous 3D film made in Europe, I, I guess, uh, intentionally uh, famous. Uh, Asterix, I don't know about uh, 
we, if you saw that, but it's one of the best, big production. That's not an inter independent production of the past few years. Fly Me to the Moon, it's been uh, released a few years ago, but it's one of the big animation films produced here last year. And Mr. Hublot, uh, that Jim told us about a little bit earlier, we got, it was, it's a short film, of course, but it got an Academy Award. Um, you might recognize some names of these directors. Uh, they are European, European directors, and they all, they all made a 3D film. Uh, Jean-Jacques Hano, Jean-Luc Godard, who is actually screening a film right now in Cannes, Michel Gondry, Werner Zog, uh, Jean-Pierre Jeunet, Patrick Lecomte, Wim Wenders, and more coming, we hope. Some documentaries as well. We are not only doing feature film, but we have very interesting and creative documentaries made in Europe. Um, here are some uh, for as well as TV and for uh, cinema. Uh, Ride and Fly, Amaziona, which has been released early this year. African Safari coming soon, made in Belgium. D-Day, Normandy 3D, intended for IMAX and uh, regular screens. Um, to have numbers, um, since 2010, about 25 feature films have been made in Europe, and 70, more than 70 documentaries have been done here. Um, many ways to find your film in Europe. In France, uh, you can find, and in other countries, car production with local and experienced producers, of course. In France, we've got the Center of National um, Cinematography. We've got a special line for uh, supporting the 3D films and international car production. In Belgium, you've got tax shelters. We've got the chance to uh, um, be partners of uh, some film marts in Europe, and especially, and you will know, you will know more about it at the end of the session, the 3D film mart in Liège. And of course, pre-sell some from uh, TV channels. About 3D TV in Europe, uh, 10 million 3D TV has been sold uh, in 2012. 12.5 uh, in 2013, and it's growing and it's growing, um, without talking about 4K and, and Ultra HD coming soon. The best sales are in Germany, UK, France, uh, Italy, and Spain. Uh, the Blu-ray 3D market is growing since it was born. Uh, most of the documentaries are been, uh, have been released in Blu-ray, and more of the feature film as well. Um, to come back to our associations, uh, if you've got projects here in Europe, you can find um, within our members, co-production partners, um, creative uh, advisors and partners, technical advisors and services providers. Our members have been awarded um, by international festivals, 3D and not 3D festivals are the International 3 Society, um, the 3D store media in Belgium, uh, 3D Keith in Korea, uh, and, and some very famous uh, festivals in the US. And uh, again, the Oscar for Mr. Blue, we are very proud of. Um, some independent um, professional of up 3 d worked on US blockbusters as uh, Transformers 4 and Stalingrad, so you will find very experienced and skilled professional here in Europe. Um, as the world for the end, the European is market is wide open and I should say that the European professionals are very ready to welcome you if you've got projects to uh, share with us. Thank you.